if you work with AppRight functions and you're still managing your own API keys, you really should try our new dynamic keys. I promise you, once you use these, you're not gonna wanna go back to the old way of doing things. So let me show you how this works. So traditionally in the past, what we would do is we would create some kind of key within our console. And once we create this key, we set some kind of scopes and this manages what this key can and cannot do. Now, once we have our key, we can simply copy it and bring this into our function. And within our function, we need to bring this into the settings section and we'll pass it down as an environment variable. So within our editor here, I'll just pass in API underscore key. Here I can paste in the key. And once I've passed in the API key through my environment variables, I can access it within the function like this. The problem with this method is that if this key ever gets leaked, this can seriously compromise our app and managing these keys and constantly having to rotate them and update our environment variables can really get messy and annoying. But luckily with dynamic keys, we don't have to do this anymore. So in the AppRite 1.6 release, we introduced dynamic keys for functions. And these are simply short-lived API keys that get created on every single function execution, and they expire once that execution is complete. This key is available in your function by default through the request headers, so there's no need to pass down any environment variables. So just to reiterate my point, we no longer need to access our environment variables. We can just access request.headers. And here we can just go ahead and pass in x dash app right dash key. And this dynamic key will be created on the execution and that expires once the function is complete. But how do we set the scopes for this key and know how it manages things within our application? Well, to do this, we need to go to the function level and we don't need this environment variable anymore. So I'll just remove it to show you that we don't need that. And down here, we now have this scope section here. And this is where we set the scope for this specific dynamic key. So for this last part, I want to do a little demonstration for you and show you how all of this works. So right now we have this dynamic key being generated for our function and we have not set any scopes for this specific key. So what I want to do here is actually make a request to try to get all our users from our application. And this first request should be blocked and I modified some code to demonstrate this. So let's just quickly recap this and then we're going to update those scopes. So what we did here is we just initiated a client instance and now we're using that dynamic key here and we're passing that in through set key when we initiate our client then we just go ahead and get our users and i'm going to return all the users in this application and just for demonstration purposes i'm also going to return the key there's no need to do this but i'm just going to show you how this key rotates so right now the scopes are not set so within postman i took this url for my function we're going to go ahead and execute this and first see how it's blocked and then update that scope so on this first request, we can see that we are not authorized to perform this action. So inside of our function, I'm just gonna go ahead and say within auth, we can read and write to our users. Let's go ahead and update this scope for the dynamic key. And once that's updated, we can now go ahead and send that request. And this right here now returns that dynamic key with all the users in my application. Now, the reason why I wanted to return this API key is notice this specific part right here. When I refresh this, this will change. So I'm going to send the request again. And now we get a new key. So that key rotated. And on every single function request, this is going to rotate. So one last thing before we go, I wanted to mention that whenever you're using these functions locally and you try to do this same demonstration here, on local development, this API key only regenerates once every hour. So if you don't see that rotation process, that's why it's happening. Just wanted to make sure you're aware of that.